Sometimes I didn't know what to do because I was younger and I didn't have enough tools in my tool belt. I didn't know that I was in control of my thoughts, actions, words, and deeds at that point. I thought I was a victim to everything, like everybody was doing to me. How many people walk around the planet now going, everybody does it to me? They have a victim mentality or they have an entitlement mentality. And either way, they're both the same, just on different spectrums of the, ro of the scale. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And the purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone, that you are in control of your life. It doesn't matter where you came from or what your circumstances are. We've all experienced suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, and hopelessness. This show is here to help you turn those dark moments around and create a whole new you. Despite your success, have you felt lonely, angry, frustrated, or even suicidal? Do you long to be supported, recognized, and respected for who you are, not just the awards and accolades on your walls? You don't want to be known, identified, or remembered in a way that feels fraudulent because you achieve things out of obligation and not passion. Do you find yourself sitting quietly at lunch, sitting listening to what lights you up only to feel shame, fear, frustration, and resentment. Your inner turmoil and limiting beliefs surface, making you feel not good enough and afraid of doing something different. We've read the books, attended the seminars, and practiced new concepts and principles, yet you still find yourself in the same rut. The lies you tell yourself perpetuate a cycle of disappointment, you say you'll change, but your self-limiting beliefs keep you running the show, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. As a certified coach, I empower you to become your authentic self. My Soul Journey programs aligns with your true self and guides you to find your soul vision, helping you discover your purpose in life. I provide tools to step into your true magnificence and remember who you are. If you're interested in learning more, you can contact me at BraveTV at KathleenMFlanagan.com. Check out awakeningspirit.com, which is an aromatherapy based product, Caroline, that is offering alternative healing remedies using natural and organic ingredients. Use the coupon code 40% or use the coupon code Brave TV to receive a 40% discount. All the products are guaranteed. And if something doesn't work, feel free to reach out to me and we will reformulate it specifically for you. Visit grandmasnaturalremedies.net, which is a CBD company that includes essential oils in every blend and has either an isolate or a broad spectrum. Every product is tested and the lab results are on the website and use the coupon code BRAVETV to enter um, to receive a 20% discount. And each week I start out the show with the tuning forks, bringing in love, happiness, and balance. This is to set the tone for the show and bring in the best in both myself and my guests. Let's begin. I wanted to talk about alignment today for many reasons. Um, next week, I'm going to have Amber Vilhauer on, and we're going to go more in depth in it. But I, went, I wanted to talk about it because one of the main keys that I'm finding in our society today is how much everybody is out of alignment. Everybody thinks they want this, they want that, they're going after this dream, they're chasing whatever comes down the pike. And I see it mostly probably with business owners. They're trying the next best thing, they're trying to do a lot of different things to just make money. And it really comes down to that they're just out of alignment. They're not focused on where they're going or what they want to do. And so I'm also going to be doing a seminar, a summit on 
September 11th, and I'm going to talk about this more in depth as well and offer some coaching and I do an alignment session as well as doing the soul vision. But what I want to talk about is basically one day last, well, I think it's, yeah, it was last year after a particularly challenging week, I took some time for myself and I went on a long hike. And as I walked through the quiet, serene forest and the ship, something shifted within me and I started to reflect on my life and my choices and the path. And then it hit me that I was living in a way that was out, that was, I was living in aligned life based on other people's expectations and not what was, how I felt about things. And I needed to realign myself to my deepest values and to my passions. And so that liver, that <clears throat> realization actually was liberating and terrifying at the same time. And I knew it would require some significant changes, letting go of certain aspects of my life, stepping into the unknown, trusting my inner guidance. But I started to make these changes and something really amazing happened. Not only did I get, begin to feel more authentic and fulfilled, but the impact I was having on others also deepened. And I was no longer just going through the motions. I, um, I was living with a purpose and that purpose was resonating with those around me. And it was a powerful reminder that when we are in line with our true selves, we naturally create a positive ripple effect, which is as Amber would call it, would be an infinite impact. And so basically when I was doing this, and this was before she created her program at that point, and she had talked about your avatar, your vision, your why, and your core values. Now I had my avatar and I had my vision, not to the extent of what it is today, but I had what I thought it was. I created a manifesto for my business and just really dived into how I wanted to live my life, what I wanted to see my business do and create. And in that process, there was a core value section that she did. Now, I've always known what my core values were, but I never really thought to bring them into business in the way that I'm starting to bring them into business. And what was really interesting when I really focused in on the core values was I actually had a VA at the time and he was... He would go rogue on me. Let's just put it that way. He would go rogue and trying to find him. And even though we made commitments to have Friday morning calls, he didn't do Friday morning calls a lot of times with me. He just went rogue. And I remember I was finally hit my limit. I was frustrated. I wasn't sure what to do. And I looked at my core values and one of them was integrity. And so I went back to our contract and I discovered at that moment in time that he never did one thing on his contract. What he did was everything that I was doing. I mean, he took like most of my, my social media posts that I had put together and he did his thing or he used my stuff. And I was a little upset by that. And, and I finally had enough and I just basically let him know that we were done. And at that moment, he was like, no, 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 let's do this. We can make this work. And it was like, no, because when I discovered that he wasn't doing, um, I'm going to sneeze in a minute, I think. Um, when he said that he wasn't going, when he didn't do what was in the contract, I realized that he was out of integrity and we were not in alignment. And because of not being in alignment, that meant I needed to move forward without him because integrity is a very big deal for me. I live my life to the best of my ability with integrity. And it was something that my mother taught me a long time ago. There's no reason to lie. Just be honest because you'll never get into as much trouble if you're honest than if you lie about it. And my father was a perpetual liar. This man would tell stories. I would tell stories sometimes because he never believed. If I told the truth, he didn't believe it. My mother did, but he didn't. So then I would create this, one of the most elaborate, crazy 
lies. And my mother would look at me cross-eyed like, what the hell are you talking about? She knew it was a lie, but my father bought it. Go figure. Um, but my father was a perpetual liar. So that made sense why he would buy into the lies. But I always really like the idea of telling the truth. And, and sometimes it's really hard to tell the truth. It really does. It kind of sucks when you have to do that. But I'd rather do that because it, I did find that there was less ramifications. Yeah, I still would get punished, but there was less ramifications. And I was living in a, a clean consciousness because the other thing that I discovered when you lie because of integrity, you forget the stories you tell people. And to this day, certain things that people said that I said that I never said, I still say the same story over and over and again. So what does that tell you? If I was lying, the story would shift and change. So what I came to realize was that my alignment and living through my core values and bringing them into business made a huge difference. To me, it was the missing piece because I had my avatar. I mean, I wrote her in 2017 and she was exactly who I am and I just didn't know what to do with her. I knew what my vision was. I knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to put it all together. And for some reason, when I, when Amber had put this thing with the core values together, it really resonated with me. And now I was also in the David Bear doing the whole human framework where we were dealing with our core limiting belief, which mine I thought was undeserving, but it was really not being lovable. And so I was discovering my soul vision. I had written out my soul vision. And then here comes these core values that come along. And it was like everything clicked. It was like all the dots connected at that moment in time. So it was like, oh my God, this is like a whole new way. Cause it's not like I have to be one person over here in home. I'm another person at work. I'm another person in front of my family. I'm another person in front of my friends. I mean, I felt like I was wearing masks and I feel like that's what our world is doing right now is we have masks for every different aspect of who we are and who we associate with people in our lives. And that is, that gets tiring. That's how I feel. And when I realized that I could be the same person and I have lived my life pretty much trying to be the same person. If I was a pissy bitch, then I was going to be that regardless. And I, but that was me coming from a place of where I was. I didn't, wasn't going to put on a smile and be nice to all the strangers in the world and then be come home and kick the cat, so to speak. If I was going to be that, I was going to be that way at home. I was going to be that way at work. I was going to be that way wherever. Now, did I want to be in that place? No, but sometimes I didn't know what to do because I was younger and I didn't have enough tools in my tool belt. I didn't know that I was in control of my thoughts, actions, words, and deeds at that point. I thought I was a victim to everything, like everybody was doing to me. How many people walk around the planet now going, everybody does it to me? They have a victim mentality or they have an entitlement mentality. And either way, they're both the same, just on different spectrums of the, of the scale. And so when I did the, when I changed and started really dialing in on my core beliefs, there was a big shift that happened. And I, and I've been, the way I look at it, we were, I was in a mastermind this morning and, you know, we were all in this place and it wasn't like a bad place it was just a realization place. Like, cause it's September. It's like, <clears throat> where's the year going? There's a change of season. The holidays are coming. We have what, four months left of the year. And then it's a new year. We've got this crazy political thing going on. We're having all this conflict and turmoil on the planet. There's so much that it's, it's becoming almost hard to cope with. It's almost, for especially for the light workers, is that it, it's we're dealing with a lot of heavy, dense energy. And we're trying to stay light and happy and vibrant. And sometimes it's hard, you know, it's not that we want to die, it's just that it's hard and we signed up for this. And so what we were talking about is really just do what you can right now, right in this moment, what can you do to keep moving forward? Because that one baby step makes all the difference in the world. And it may seem minor, but it's not. 
I was saying that I feel like I've got so much going on up here. I wish somebody would cut my head open and let whatever this is and get it out so I can bring like new energy in. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but it's what I said and it's what I did. But I also know that I'm staying in my soul vision because I am stepping in to my soul vision. It's not outside of me. It's becoming a part of me. It's I'm walking in and I'm in control. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. So in this process of alignment, and I want to talk about something else before I, I go down more of the spiritual and practical alignment, but part of the spiritual side is, is that back in 1984, 86, there were books that came out was that the first book was The Right Use of Will, and this was technically written by God or dictated, whatever, channeled. And when I read this back in 1984, it made a lot of sense of where this world was going. And I could see where it was in 1984. I understood a lot of what was being said. I don't know how much it applied to me at that time because I was very, still very young and I didn't have the awareness and the life experiences that I have today. But rereading this book, I know that it wormed its way into my consciousness, into my subconscious, unconscious part of my mind, because I have lived and done everything. And one of the things that it talks about is that we are all out of alignment and we have been out of alignment. And it's time that this alignment, we take control of that. And the way it was described in the book is that the spirit and the will are out of alignment. And we have been suppressed with what we think, how we feel, our emotions, the feminine energy, all of that has been suppressed and it needs to change. I have done work where I brought in the feminine energy and working through a lot of this stuff. And when, um, when I was reading this last night, it talked about that, and I did this, we have stuffed so much of our emotions down inside of our body. We don't even know what we think. We don't know what we feel. We don't know anything because we just buried and buried and stuffed and stuffed. And all of that actually goes in to your organs and it's a cellular memory. And one of the things that it was suggested is that you rage, whatever it is, and you rage and you rage and you rage. You don't want to hurt anyone. You want to rage. If that means screaming in a pillow whatever it was. I used to vacuum my house and rage while I was running the vacuum cleaner to get out this emotion that I felt because I was so angry. I didn't understand what was happening. I was in my twenties. I did not know what happened to me yet. Other, and I didn't know why I was so angry, but I was. And that really did, because according to this book, if you start releasing all those pent up emotions, then you can start seeing what's going on inside of you. And that's part of what this alignment process is, is getting back into a balance. What are you thinking up here? What is in your heart? What are you observing in your environment? And how do you feel about that? Are you a people pleaser? Are you, you know, like a workaholic? Are you demanding and nice to be around? Or are you just somebody that just is not you put you put on a face and you act like everything's wonderful look at me i'm so good and inside you're just self-loathing about what a fake you are how fraudulent you are that your life has no meaning you don't matter okay and that's where our world is i mean if we look at what our environment what our world looks like human life has no value and we do have value. Every single one of us have value. We're here to help change this world. And the only way this world's gonna change is if we come back into alignment, if we come back and start taking personal responsibility, because that was something that showed up this morning very loudly and clearly with one of the labs that I work with in my environmental business, is that you receive my samples on this date, where are my sample results? I should have, I should have had them on Friday, I got them today and I, I sent a, a not so nice email about it and saying, I did what you asked me to do. You asked me to call, you asked me to do this, you asked me to do that. And somehow it all got turned around that this is my fault and they told me to go find someone else. 
because they weren't going to accept the mail. And it's not because they won't accept the mail and they're blaming the post office for not delivering the mail. And it's really that the receptionist doesn't get off her butt and go to the mailbox. And that's really what it is. And the frustration of how customer service is. Now, I acknowledge my responsibility in this and I acknowledge my emotions in this and I acknowledge a lot of things. And the only thing that I can control is what I say, how I think, how I feel and how I want to respond. And I told my business partner, I said, I, I can't do this anymore with them. I'm done. I'm just done. Because a lot of times we are in some of the most remote places in Wyoming and there's no FedEx or UPS at all. Zero, nada, zilch, none. And we have to rely on the post office. And they tell me to go someplace else because they're not going to accept mail from us. And if they do, they're going to return them. Wow, that's professional. And yet, isn't that what our world is every single day? I'm not going to do anything for you because it's all about me. Well, when you start living with your core values, because what are mine? I'm about integrity, taking responsibility, empowering others. Oh, God. I, okay, my brain just went out. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But it, it's what it is. It's about empowering others. Oh, making sure that people matter, you know, listening to people, hearing what they have to say, being empathetic. That, I mean, that's another one, empathy. So that's definitely there. But, it, you know, it's people need to matter because how many of us fe don't feel seen, heard, and valued? I know I've walked through most of my life and that's the one thing I don't want to do to my clients or my customers that are buying the book. I made phone calls to my customers or not even, they weren't even customers. I met them at a book signing and I called them and personally invited them to a book signing. Do you know these people were all lit up and it's like, really? I'm going to put it on my calendar right now. And I'm like, whoa. And what am I afraid of? The telephone. And that's the last thing that's ever happening is because I'm showing up for people. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be doing this. I know that you already bought my books, but we're going to come back. And it's like, oh, I can't wait. I just, you guys are so much fun and so much this and blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, wow, wow. And what else did I do? I said, invite a friend and I will give you a free copy of my book. Signed. How's that? What is this going to cost me? I made somebody feel good. It makes me feel good. When we do that, our world starts to change. And people don't understand that. And that's part of when some of the steps of getting into alignment is becoming aware and doing self-reflection. And that's what I've been talking about is we have to look at how we're behaving. How are we, how are we showing up in the world? Because if we want good things to come, it has to come with how we're showing up. Having fun is a big one. And, that, and how many people have fun anymore? Not a whole lot. I, I'm guilty of that too. I do my best but I don't always have fun because I'm more about working than I am having fun, but I love what I do. So I'm still having fun. And that makes a big difference. You know, the intentionality of our actions, that becomes another major factor. We have to become very intentional about what we're doing. That means being conscious, being present, be here now. Don't be in the habitual side of your nature, be present. Pay attention. Don't worry about what you have to say. Listen to what somebody else is saying and then respond, not with what you want to say, but what you need to say for them. And that becomes another way to get into alignment as well is being intentional with what you're doing. Again, core values. If you're using them, those are a great navigation for keeping your North Star. Embrace the change. And God knows change sometimes just sucks. Totally sucks. But you know what? When you let go of whatever you're holding on to, because the only reason you're suffering in change is because you're refusing to let go. If you let go and embrace it, everything changes. And I and I and that's a hard one, okay? And I will give you that because there were times that, you know, it's like if I let go of the side of the river embankment, I'm going to die. No, you're going to die by holding on. If you let go and float down the river, you're going to be safe. That's when you're allowing spirit to work through you. You're trusting, you're guiding, you're being guided. 
And when you can do that, there's so much more freedom in your mind, in your body, in everything that you do. There's so much more freedom that it's like, wow, I don't have to do this by myself. And yet we think, oh, I have to do this all by myself. And no, you don't. We're never that way. And that's, and that's what gets me with, you know, I mean, this was a hard one for me to learn. I was, just, I was a lone ranger. And I don't like being a lone ranger because I've learned to ask for help. I've learned to realize I do have value, that I do matter. And all those little baby steps that I've taken through my life have gotten to me this point to where this was a best life I could have ever done. You know, so, and all those things, they actually do create an infinite impact, as Amber would say it. And there it's a rippling effect. And that's what an infinite impact is, is that when you're aligned with your actions, you inspire, uplift and transform others. And we don't know what that's going to do for somebody in the future. We don't know what that one little smile is going to do for somebody. Maybe you kept somebody from jumping off or putting a gun to their head. You don't know how many times have People said that they didn't commit suicide because somebody showed that they cared. Look at our youth. They're dying because they don't know. Nobody's seeing them. Nobody's hearing them. And I actually received an email from this woman that I met in Colorado Springs. And I've been reaching out and she finally sent an email and it just touched my heart because she said, you really saw me. You saw me. Nobody sees me like you did. And all I could see is that this woman was just this incredible pillar of light. And she shared a little bit of her story. And it was like, thank you for that. And it was heartfelt. And, and I want to create a membership where people like that can come in and we can share that. So we're not alone. So we're, we're not fighting the world by ourselves that we, there's power in numbers. And again, that was, because I listened and I saw her, even though I was talking to her boyfriend and who was a mess of what was happening in his life and she's trying to help him, nobody's paying attention to her. And I paid attention to her and it made all the difference in the world for her life because she felt like she had as a strength because I wanted her to feel that she wasn't alone and that she is doing the hard work and I'm here to help support her in any way that I can. And she bought my books and that wasn't, the intention, I was talking to her boyfriend and observing her at the same time. And because of all that, because I touched both of them, they bought my books. And that's an infinite impact in ways that I don't even know. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. So some of the... As we come into alignment, we're going to feel shifts and changes, and we're going to have both internal and external challenges that are going to come up from this. And usually the internal is going to be your fears, your doubts, and any resistance that's going to come up because our egos want us to feel safe. Now, we're not in the caveman days anymore. We're not fighting dinosaurs or bears or saber-toothed tigers or anything else, but our ego remembers that. And, just, and it's designed to change that. Now, our bodies are always in a high stress situation because of the world that we live in, okay? So that doesn't help. But the whole point is, is that the fears, these fears are making us foolish. They're, we're staying stuck where we are. And, and I've always said my whole life, I have nothing to fear but fear itself because I've walked through more fears. And there were times that I thought for sure I was going to die. Thought for sure. I was going to die. And I didn't. I got on the other side of it. And so it's about paying attention to that. And there's, there's techniques that I have that you can go through and how to start changing your mindset and looking at the evidence of it's a lie because our ego is going to lie to us because it's going to do whatever it can to self-preserve. And it's not going to die, but it thinks it will. Then the other thing is when I faced a lot of my fears and I was very much alone. And this woman I was talking about, she was the same way. She, she went through all this on her own by herself and, you know, and therapy is, could be a good thing, but 
I think they're just as messed up as most of us. And if they haven't done the deep work on themselves, then they're only going to go to the depth of where they went. So I went on my own journey on my, and found my own light. And throughout the dark night of the soul and awakened in those two books, I really talked about and deep dived into the traumas that I went through and what I faced. But it, I had to do that. I had to find my light. I had to find it because so many things we have been lied to our whole lives about so many things. I mean, our society is dumbing us down. We don't use creativity. They're trying to get rid of the arts because this is creativity. They don't, they certainly don't like the baby boomers because look what we did. We had the Star Treks and we had the Motorola came up with the flip phones because of Star Trek and all of the sci-fi stuff. And we know the younger generation doesn't know, but we know. We know what this world is supposed to be like, and it's not that anymore. And the only way to gain control is that we stop it and we start paying attention and quit looking at what can I get, what can I give, and all this crap about you know the social side of things of give me money and I shouldn't have to pay for anything. Well, yeah, go to another country if that's how you feel. Um, we all work for what we have and nothing is handed to us. And yes, we have a divine right, but that means we also use our mind and we do things to be creative. Nobody owes you a life. Nobody owes you anything on this planet. I don't care who you are and what you think you are. Nobody owes you. And look at Prince Harry. Okay. Look at that whole nightmare. I mean, whatever, whatever his mission is, whatever his purpose is, but look at, just because he's royalty, he's not getting everything he wants. So take a look at the world and really take those blinders off and see what's going on in this world. And then when you look at the external, I mean, that's part of the external is you've got to look at what is society expecting of you? Certainly not a whole lot. I mean, you want to be an Elon Musk. Well, I wouldn't want to be Elon Musk just because he has money, but that doesn't mean his life is any good. doesn't mean Bill Gates' life is good because they have money. Money doesn't make you happy. It provides conveniences. And that's the thing that people don't understand is that they think money's the root of happiness. And it's not. And when you start looking at that, and then you got to look at when somebody looks at you or says something and you're taking it as a criticism, but what if it's not a criticism? What if they're just saying something, but your internal dialogue is what's reaping up and screaming in your head? I can't tell you how many times somebody looked at me and they probably just had gas, but I took it as, oh, they don't like me. They're going to do this. And, and I create this whole story because that's what our minds do. Our minds create stories. If we can stop the storytelling of the, on the negative side and say, well, maybe they just had gas and everything's fine. And then you ask them, are you okay? And they say, yeah, my stomach's just a little upset. Hello. And what did you do? You went down a rabbit hole on something that wasn't even real. And that's what we got to stop. That's what we take control of. That's how you stay in alignment. Besides working through all of it, that's how you stay in alignment too, is you stop letting your habits run your life. And we are very habitual people. I mean, everything we do is habitual and it's changing that. Some habits are really good, like brushing your teeth and taking a shower every day. Those are good habits. But what about the ones that aren't so good? The ones that the self-talk up here, the, the limiting beliefs that we create, the judgments, the jealousy, the resentments that we carry. Because you can't be happy. Well, if you can't be happy because somebody else is successful, guess what? You'll never be successful because you haven't even brought that energy into your beingness. If you can be happy for somebody else's success, guess what? That means it's coming for you too because you've opened the space for it. And it will come when it's your time, not before and not after. If you're working and making the change to go there and have the life that you want, it will happen as long as you're diligently making those conscious choices in your life. You know, and then we look at how many times do we look at setbacks of, oh, I have this business and now I have to go to back to work. I did this a lot. What's wrong with me? Something's wrong with me. I can't make it work. And yet when you go back to work because you still have to pay your bills as you're trying to get a business off the ground, guess what? 
I was given people, I was given opportunities. I had opportunities of experiences where I could learn something of like, oh, well, this would, if I did this, this would do this and this would do this. And you start seeing how you needed that extra experience, that there was something for you to go back to, or you have an opportunity because you're not as a solopreneur, you're alone and isolated. You're not around people. Well, when you're working, you're around people. So guess what? You can talk to them about what you're doing and how you're and what you're creating and that kind of thing. And sometimes you get customers out of it. So we have to take things that we look at as setbacks when they're not setbacks. They're not failures. And yet we're conditioned to think that if we don't make a million dollars on this one idea, we're a failure, but we're not failures. We're not designed to be failures. It just didn't work. And I always say, go back to Edison. He learned what, 10,000 ways, what doesn't make a light bulb. And he just kept improving and tweaking and that kind of thing. And that's what we do. That's what our spirit does. That's part of our evolution in life is taking all of this and bringing it all home. It's about waking up and remembering who you truly are. When you're in alignment, you're in alignment with source up here and they're driving the bus. And you're just there and you're co-creating with them. Like they're paving the way for you. And you're just paying attention to whatever's coming on over here. Well, what's coming up over here? What's this? Oh, I see this coming. And Spirit says, no, we're going we're gonna to do a, light, a slight test and change and ship. And when we do that, because Spirit knows, we know ultimately where we're going. We may not be conscious of it, but we know. And we will get there the way we're supposed to get there. We're supposed to be feeling whatever this is in the world. And it's dense. This is dense, dark energy. And I feel it. And I'm an empath, okay? And I'm doing what I can to transmute what I need to transmute. It's not easy to do this work. It's very, very difficult. But it's rewarding. And what I'm offering is a 90 minute alignment session that gets you into alignment that you will never get out of alignment in you unless you choose to. So it's not about just get who, what is your, who is your avatar, your, re, your vision and your why. It's also about your core values. And so you get into alignment and then I teach you how to stay in alignment. And then you can take all of that into your life, into your personal relationships. You can take it into your businesses. You can take it to your team members because once you know how to do that, then just look at the impact that you're making with other people around you because you're going to teach them. When I start bringing in people, you're damn right I'm going to have people that are like me, that are going to have the core values that I have, that are going to value the same things that I value, that they're, I'm going to have them in alignment because I want them to bring the best of that they are to the table. I want to feed them the way they need to be fed as I'm still managing a company, but they're taking pressure off of me to do certain things. And because our values are aligned, it's no longer work. It's a joy because we're all working for the same common goal. Wouldn't that be a great way to have a life? Wouldn't that be a great way to have a marriage instead of being angry at your spouse because he's not doing the dishes? Hello? I know that I still struggle at times with poor Sal. I mean, there are days when it's like, you're just making me crazy. And, but I also have to remember what he's doing. He's getting up at 3.30 in the morning. So I don't see him a lot right now because of the job that he has. And he'll get home at what? Well, right now he's getting home about 3.30 instead of 5.30. But, you know, it's, I still have to look at, well, look at what I'm doing. I'm trying to bring difference in the world and I want, that relationship with him, but he's also trying to do it and get into a different place. So we have to be tolerant of each other. And some days it's challenging. Okay. It is, but on a whole, we just laugh at each other because we know that we're so full of it. And we know that what the other person's doing and we love each other and we know we're going to die together and grow old together. We've already made all those commitments. And some days it's like, you can still, there's the door you can leave because I'm not going to put up with this. And he just looks at me like, yeah, okay, here we go. But when he knows when I say that, I'm usually pretty serious, especially if there's something really going on between us that we need to work through and we do work through it. And that's, that's maturity. And that's, and I'm not blaming him 
for it. I'm just telling him how I feel. I'm taking responsibility of when you do this, this is how I feel. And I don't like this feeling about this. And it reminds me of this or this or this. And it's all truth. But I'm not blaming him. I'm explaining to him why this is bothering me. So he understands me better. I mean, we did that one day. A couple of weeks ago, we actually did that. Well, what was really funny, it was a couple of days ago. He said, I think I'm getting sick. Feel my head. And we were in bed and I was talking to him and I said, and he said, my mom always used to do this for me. I said, what, feel your head? He said, yeah, because she would always tell me if I'm sick. I said, is that why you actually have me feel your head all the time? Is because you want confirmation that you're sick? And he says, yeah. And it was like the weirdest thing because it was like, I never understood why he did that because me, I don't get sick. And then it's like, get over it if you're sick. And, you know, you be done with it in 24 hours. That's what I do. But to understand that part of this was a pattern that he does, but it was for him, it was comforting. When I say yes, it makes him feel like, okay, I'm not crazy and somebody loves me and somebody knows. And then it's like, you know, then we do whatever we do when the other person gets sick. So I just thought it was rather comical because we're still learning about each other and we never know what that is until a circumstance comes in. But it's also that we're also trying to stay in alignment with each other and the relationship and keeping the value there as well. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. So the other thing that I wanted to mention that I started to mention in this mastermind this morning was that we are in uncharted times on so many different levels. We are in uncharted times and it's time also for us to, aside from staying in alignment, but just really reflecting and trying to find your way to navigate because when I was, when I was sharing a little bit this morning, I was just saying, I don't feel like I have tools in my tool belt and I have tons of tools in my tool belt. What I don't have tools in my tool belt is dealing with this dense, heavy energy, dealing with the uncertainty of our world, the fear that is coming up, that's transmuting. And even though I could know where we're going, I could understand where we're going. I could, it makes sense to me. We're still being affected by it. I'm still human. I'm still on this planet. I am in the race consciousness. As much as I want to stay above it, and I do, there are times when we get hit. When we get hit emotionally with it, it's just be with it. That's all I can say is just be with it. it may, it's ugly. It could be messy. You could cry. But that's part of what the book, The Right Use of Will, talks about too, is that if the emotion's there, then let it out. Because underneath that emotion is the freedom that you're looking for. The answer is underneath that emotion that you're feeling. And that's what I, I was striving to do. And we all talked about doing that one thing that we could do to stay where we are, to keep moving, you know, understand the emotion. And yes, it's hard some days to do this work. It's very hard to do it especially when there's billions of people that are so lost and confused and you feel like you're the only one. That's why this mastermind is so powerful because we're talking about really deep, heartfelt things. And that's what people need is to be able to talk about deep, heartfelt things where there's no judgment that we're just human and we're experiencing it. And maybe somebody has a different perspective on it and they can share that. And it's a light bulb for you. That's why I want to put a membership together for people that join, that take the alignment class, that buy my books or does my soul journey course that's coaching with me is that I create this environment that we meet once every week, once every other week, whatever it is, where we can come together and share where we're at, where we empower each other that we're staying in alignment, that we're supporting each other. Because, you know, once we know that we have support, we can do anything. There's an element within our psyche that makes us feel invincible because somebody's helping you, holding you up. You're not alone. You're not isolated. 
You're not a victim. You're a human having a human experience. You're, you're a spiritual being having the human experience. And sometimes this is really tough to navigate through these waters, but we're doing it. And that's why staying connected, when you're in alignment, you are connected with your intuition, with your source, with your God, whatever you want to call it, you are connected to that. That is your guiding, that's your guiding light. And that's why when people are in alignment, because who am I to say, I don't know what their journey is. I'm not walking in their shoes. Nobody walked in my shoes. Nobody knows my journey the way I know it. Nobody can understand it. But the thing is, is we show unconditional love. We show empathy. We show compassion. If you've got a friend who's doing something that you can't live with, then say something and just say, I can't do this right now. I did this to a friend of mine years ago. I didn't understand what she was doing, who she was, because how I knew her and what she was doing were two different things. But I allowed her to be her. And I said, when you're done being this like wild, crazy person that I don't understand with this wild, crazy guy that I really don't understand, um, I'm here for you. And when she was done with him, she came back and said, I just want to thank you for allowing me to do that. She said, I really needed to do that. I was never a little kid. And she was like a little kid that was just having a good time in her life for the first time because she was a very responsible person. Um, she had abuse in her life, the whole thing. And she just needed to have that moment of freedom. And that was a, such a trajectory change for her that, I mean, where she is today from where she was when she did that is mind blowing. I mean, she's not the same person. There's nothing about her that is similar to that day, but I gave her permission to be whatever she was. I didn't judge her. I still loved her. And when she came back, it was like, okay, I'm back. And I'm like, oh, cool. And we talked about her adventure. I mean, I've done adventures too. I've done stupid things. We all have. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's just part of what we have to learn, something that we may have to do. And that's what you do. But you show compassion for somebody. You don't sit there and say, you do it my way or no way. You don't sit there and judge people. Or if you don't believe in the... Democrats or the Republicans, so you're just a piece of garbage or whatever it is that you do. It's like, since when? And yet this is all by design. That's the hard part is the gray is gone. We're making decisions one way or another. And the shift is going to occur and it's all going to be based on what you do up here, how you think here, what comes out of here and how you're feeling. It's all up to you what, what path you take because there is a path and it is a separation coming people, I'm telling you. And if you're not in alignment with you, then, you know, you can have more of this crazy world over here, but I'm going over here where it's peace, love, and happiness coming in, where we're working together. We're supporting each other. Everybody has what they need. We're working in unison with each other. It's not a competitive rivalry. I got to get mine and you don't get it. It's not a win lose. It's not an us against them. It's none of that. And I think that's a much better world to live in, in that it's not an us versus them. And I really, 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 really want to see so many of you to come in and join in and let's change this world together. I mean, it's not hard. It's easy. Well, let's see. It's easy to do, but it's not, but it's hard at the same time because we're fighting, we're fighting our own battles and you know, your life will be miraculous and beautiful if you can get on the other side. So I really do support you and invite you that really, if you want to have a, a session or a, a coaching call with me to see if we're in alignment, feel free to use my, you know, contact me at brave TV at Kathleen and .com, And we can set that up and we can move forward from there. So I want to thank all of you today for joining me. And if you got any value, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to talk to you and start a conversation. I would love if you would like and subscribe this or give a link to friends and family. Also my books, The Dancing Souls, The Call Awakened in the Dark Night of the Soul are up on Amazon and Kathleen M. Flanagan's. Um, if you visit KathleenMFlanagan.com, there's a list of my services and products that are there. And there is a three minute de-stress meditation that really will start to change your life and make life a lot easier because you're releasing through sound. And then the coupon codes at awakeningspirit.com and grandmasnaturalremedies.net by entering brave TV. 
And that concludes our show for today. So I want to thank you all for joining me. And I will see you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.